Suddenly, a ghost appeared. It's a ghost, cried Thomas. Thomas was hard at work, pulling trucks full of coal. He soon came across a tunnel, which he needed to pass through. So his driver got out to change the points. When... What was that? asked his driver. I... I, I, I don't know, replied this scared Thomas. Suddenly... A ghost appeared. It's a ghost, cried Thomas. His driver jumped back in and they hurried off without the coal trucks. <laughs> Later that day, Gordon was pulling the express. stopped. Oh, who has left trucks full of coal in my way? He grumbled. What was that? A ghost! He ran away, leaving his express behind. James was busy working too. Huh, that's strange. There's Gordon's Express and Thomas's trucks. But where's Gordon and Thomas? A g -g -g ghost! And he ran away too, leaving his fuel trucks behind. He ran into the other two. Did you see the ghost too? asked Thomas. Yes, and, and I was so scared, I, I left my fuel trucks behind. I left my express behind. And I left my coal trucks behind. We need to get them back. Can we scare the ghost away? Thomas has an idea. Back at the tunnel, Thomas came charging in with a dragon. But the ghost wasn't scared at all. In fact, it even giggled. <laughs> the plan hadn't worked, so Thomas reversed off back to the others. Did it work? No. But I don't think it's a real ghost, said Thomas. It giggled. Did you recognise the giggle? I... I did. But I can't quite remember where from. Percy then passed over with some trucks. <laughs> That's it! It was a troublesome truck, cried Thomas. But Thomas, it moved by itself. Trucks can't do that. There must be an engine behind this. And there was. Diesel 10. Ha <laughs> ha! Foolish steamies! They're frightened of a truck! It can't be a real ghost! Ghosts don't exist! And they tried to scare me with a dragon. Ha! <laughs> Nothing scares me! Suddenly... What was that? Ghosty scared Diesel 10 away. Ah! There's a ghost! A real ghost! Ah! 
<laughs> Looks like Ghosty taught Diesel 10 a lesson. Ghosty appeared. Thank you, Ghosty, said Thomas. Oh, no problem, he replied, and he disappeared. So the others could collect their coaches and trucks and continue with their journeys. Thank you.
Charlie is a bright purple engine on the Isle of Sodor. He loves to tell jokes, but can also be very serious, especially when he senses danger. One day, Charlie noticed the tunnel on fire. Fire! Fire! Oh no! I must get help! I know! The search and rescue team! I can ask them! And Charlie rushed off to find them. <laughs> Belle and Flynn! I need your help! There's a tunnel on fire! We need to put it out! This isn't one of your practical jokes again, is it Charlie? Asked Flynn. No, 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 there's a real fire! All right then, let's go, Belle! And the three engines headed quickly for the tunnel. However, when they arrived, there was no fire. Huh? said a very confused Charlie. I'm sure the tunnel was on fire earlier. Flynn was angry. Charlie, the search and rescue centre is always really busy. We don't have time for your jokes. Only call us when there's an actual emergency. Charlie was embarrassed and slowly backed away. The next morning, Charlie was busy at work and he was about to pass the tunnel again. <laughs> Fire! Fire! The tunnel is on fire! I must get help! And once again, Charlie rushed to the search and rescue centre. Fire! Fire! Fire at the tunnel again! Charlie, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. But there's really a fire! We are not falling for that trick again, Charlie. Now go and do some actual work. Charlie was upset. Who else can I ask to put out the fire? He thought to himself. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. I know! I can ask Fireman Sam! And Charlie rushed off to Ponty Pan. Fireman Sam! I need your help! There's a tunnel on fire over there! We need to put it out! Oh no, that's not good! exclaimed Fireman Sam. We better go right away. But this isn't one of your jokes again, is it, Charlie? No, no, no! No, there's a real fire and we must put it out. All right then, let's go. However, when they arrived, there was no fire. Huh? said a very confused Charlie. I'm sure the tunnel was on fire earlier. Fireman Sam was angry. Charlie, this is not a funny joke. But there was a fire here. I, I don't understand. The next day, Charlie was at the tunnel, just watching it. Why did the fire keep starting and stopping? Then suddenly, smoke came out of the tunnel. That's odd, Charlie thought. But then he heard a train coming towards him. It was Thomas, and he was heading straight for the tunnel. Oh no, exclaimed Charlie. Stop, Thomas! The tunnel's dangerous! Luckily, Thomas stopped just in time. What's the matter, Charlie? he asked. This tunnel keeps catching fire, and I don't know why. Oh, it's probably your wild imagination, Charlie. I'm sure it's fine. Ah! Monster! Monster! <laughs> Ah, dragon! Dragon! Bell and Flynn heard the shouting 
and rush towards the tunnel. Ready, Belle? Flynn asked. Let's soak this dragon out. Belle lined up her hoses and blasted water into the tunnel. I'll check to see if it flew away, said Belle and slowly entered the tunnel. It's gone! She announced happily. All the engines were relieved. Flynn had an apology to make. I'm sorry for not believing you, Charlie. We should have taken a look in the tunnel before assuming it was one of your jokes. Don't worry, Flynn. As long as the dragon is now gone and the island is safe again. That's all that matters. Thomas was enjoying his afternoon when he went around a sharp corner and he ran right into a very large pumpkin that was on the line. Thomas couldn't see anything. Don't worry, said his driver. I can see to drive you. And they moved forward. But Thomas did look very silly. Percy was also enjoying his day. Then the same thing happened to him. Who turned the lights out? said a shocked person. Don't worry, said his driver. I can see. And Percy moved forwards. They both now looked very silly indeed. Percy then stopped at the crossing. Who's there? said Thomas. I don't know, said Percy. I can't see. Oh, it's you, Percy. Um, I've had a bit of an accident, said Thomas. Me too, said Percy. Come on, let's get back to clean up. And they left. In the bushes lurked Diesel 10. Ha! Ha! ha. <laughs> Silly steamies. Now the tip of the sheds were being repainted, so the engines were using a set of tunnels as shelter. How's your headache, Percy? said James, trying not to laugh. You look a little under the weather, Thomas, said Gordon, also trying not to laugh. Thomas and Percy said nothing. The engine wash was broken and they felt very embarrassed with their pumpkin heads on. The next day, the pumpkins had been removed, but Thomas and Percy were still feeling embarrassed. Of course, said Gordon, it's Halloween, a time for pumpkins, ghosts, bats and spiders. Did you say ghosts and bats, said James, and we're in these old tunnels? Yes, said Gordon, they don't scare a big engine like me though. Thomas and Percy couldn't wait to get away from James and Gordon. While they were out, they got the feeling that they were being followed. said Thomas. A ghost. Uh, I'm, I'm scared, said Percy. I know someone who can help us, said Thomas. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Silly steamies. Thomas then met a real ghost train, a very friendly ghost train called Ghosty. Don't worry Thomas, there are no other real ghosts around here and I'll find out who is responsible for this. 
That pleased Thomas. Ghosty then scared away all the fake ghosts. He then met Diesel 10, who was blocking the crossing. I might have known it was you, said Ghosty. You're not a real ghost. You don't scare me, and you can't get past me, said Diesel 10. Ghosty then moved forward right through Diesel 10. Uh, OK, uh, now I'm scared, said Diesel 10. And off he went. Ghosty chased him. It was him. me. Now, leave me alone. Leave me alone, said Diesel 10. Thomas and Percy were pleased it was all over, although they were still embarrassed about the pumpkin heads. Previously, Tom Moss had trapped an engine in the tunnel. I wonder who it is. Edward never showed up on his branch line this morning. It's Edward. Ah, Edward, nice to have you back. As for you, Tom Moss, as punishment for your trick, you are to work on Edward's branch line today. Tom Moss was happily and peacefully going up and down Edward's branch line, which confused some of the engines. <laughs> Something's not right here, said Thomas. What do you mean, Thomas? asked Percy. Tom Moss is... is... working and not playing pranks. Something is not right at all. At the very last station on Edward's branch line, Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Tom Moss. Tom Moss, I am very proud of you. Passengers are having a great time. In fact, so many people like you, I need to give you an extra carriage. Keep up the good work. So now Tom Moss had two carriages on Edward's branch line. Which soon turned to three carriages. Which soon turned to four carriages. And soon Tom Moss had five carriages of passengers. <laughs> Tom Moss now has five carriages. Tom Moss has never been this hardworking and this useful. I think he's planning something, Percy, and I think it's going to be a huge prank. At the very last station on Edward's branch line, Sir Topham Hatt was once again waiting for Tom Moss. You have been so useful today, Tom Moss, so I'm going to give you a very special job to do. I need you to go to Chatsworth Station and pick up some very important guests to the island of Sodor. Queen Elsa and Princess Anna. I need you to bring them here to me. So Tom Moss left to pick up Queen Elsa and Princess Anna. Elsa and Anna were waiting on the platform when Tom Moss arrived. They soon got into the special carriage and Tom Moss left the station. He passed Thomas and Percy once again. <laughs> Tom Moss is carrying Elsa and Anna in his carriage. I don't like the sound of that. I still think he's up to something, Percy. So Topham Hatt was waiting at the other station for Tom Moss carrying Queen Elsa and Princess Anna. He was waiting and waiting and waiting. He even waited overnight. 
but Tom Moss never showed up. Later, Thomas appeared at the station. Oh, Thomas, thank goodness you're here. Tom Moss has not turned up, and he has Queen Elsa and Princess Anna. I should never have trusted him. Get all engines to look for him right away. Yes, sir. And so the search began. Thomas looked high and low for Tom Moss. But as he entered the forest, he saw Tom Moss up ahead without the carriage. <laughs> Oh no, thought Thomas. Where has Tom Moss hidden Elsa and Anna? All of the engines were looking for the lost carriage. Salty searched the docks. Percy searched the swamp. Later, Thomas noticed something. The same tunnel Tom Moss had hidden Edward in was bricked up again. Oh no, I bet the lost carriage is in there. And Thomas raced off to get help. Soon, Thomas, Percy, Sir Topham Hatt and the search and rescue team were by the tunnel. They managed to remove the brick wall and sure enough, the lost carriage was inside. Out stepped Queen Elsa and Princess Anna. I am so sorry, Elsa and Anna. I should never have trusted Tom Moss. Wait till I see him next. He'll get what he deserves. Where do you think Tom Moss is now, Thomas? I reckon he's hiding, quietly planning his next prank. Express coming through! Express coming through! shouted Gordon proudly. Through the tunnel. Where's his express coach? There it is with... Is that Tom Moss the prank engine? It is. You're up to mischief again, aren't you? Express coming through, shouted Gordon. There were people waiting at Maithwaite for the express. Gordon pulled in. All aboard the express, he shouted. But there was no coach for the passengers. What are you doing, Gordon? said Sir Topham Hat. Where is your coach? It's behind me. Well, it was when I started, sir. I don't know what's happened to it. Thomas pulled up. Ah, oh, Thomas, said Sir Topham Hat. Can you go and fetch Annie and Clarabelle and move these passengers? Gordon seems to be getting very forgetful. And I need a reliable engine. Yes, sir, said Thomas and he raced away. I'm going to be the express! I'm going to be the express! he shouted. He picked up Annie and Clarabelle and raced off towards Maithwaite. Through the tunnel. Oh no, not <laughs> Thomas as well. Express coming through, shouted Thomas. He pulled into Maithwaite. All aboard the express, he shouted. The passengers were not happy at all. Thomas, what is going on today? 
Where are Annie and Clarabelle? But they were behind me when I left, sir. I thought... Oh, sorry, sir. I'll go and find them. He left. Down at the docks, Cranky had just loaded some paint into Ben's truck. Thanks, Cranky, said Ben, and off he went. He was taking the paint to Sir Topham Hat. Through the tunnel. Oh no, not Ben as well. Thomas then found Gordon. Have you forgotten your coaches as well, Thomas? said Gordon. There's something funny going on, said Thomas. And off he went. Thomas then met Ben. Have you seen my paint truck, Thomas? said Ben. <laughs> no, said Thomas, but there's a lot of things missing today. Percy had collected a dinosaur skeleton and was taking it to the museum. Look Thomas, said Percy. A dinosaur skeleton. I've been allowed to tow it. That gives me an idea, said Thomas. Percy then continued, but with Thomas pushing the dinosaur as well. Through the tunnel. Oh no. Here comes Tom Moss. Ha ha! Got you, said Thomas. Tom Moss steamed off backwards. Thomas followed. But Gordon stopped him. Thomas, we've got passengers waiting who are more important than catching that prankster. Let's find our coaches. I know where they'll be, said Thomas. Follow me. They found Tom Moss's tunnel and collected their trucks and coaches and got back to work. And Tom Moss, well, he realised he wasn't being chased anymore. He'd got away with it again. <laughs> Percy? Ow! That must have hurt! What are all those trucks doing piled up? Thomas was on his way to the docks to pick up a lot of cargo, so he had three trucks. Thomas stopped. These trucks feel lighter. I've lost one. I must go back and find it. The dinosaur was increasing his truck pile, with poor Percy watching, helpless. Where is that truck? thought Thomas. He stopped again. I 
just don't believe it. I've lost another truck now. He turned back again. Thomas was busy searching for his trucks. He stopped again. Oh no, now I've lost them all. Just a minute, that's Tom Moss the prank engine. Are you behind this again? <laughs> James was out delivering fuel. He'd already lost one fuel truck. He didn't want to lose another. my fuel truck gone? <laughs> Have you seen Percy? said Thomas to James. No, said James. Have you seen my fuel trucks? Sir so Topham Hat pulled up. We've got lots of problems, said Sir Topham Hat. Percy is missing, everyone has lost their trucks, and now I've had the museum saying that they've had their remote control dinosaur stolen again. How careless. Ah, I think I know what's happened then, said Thomas. Uh -oh. Thomas saw Tom Moss leave his tunnel. Follow me, he said. They followed Tom Moss, but kept their distance. There, said Thomas. Thomas then charged at Tom Moss, who backed away. He dropped the remote control which Thomas picked up and brought back to Sir Topham Hat. Well done Thomas, said Sir Topham Hat. Rocky came and lifted Percy and all the trucks back onto the track. And the dinosaur was returned to the museum. Thomas was on coal duty. He was delivering it to the engine sheds. Jumper was at the coal yard to load it into the trucks. Coal please Chomper, said Thomas, so he filled the trucks. There you go, said Chomper. Thomas thanked him and left. But a strange thing happened on the way. When Thomas passed through a tunnel, his coal disappeared. But he hadn't noticed. He bumped into Percy. Sorry Percy, I can't stop. I'm delivering coal, said Thomas. But you're going the wrong way. The coal yard's the other way, said Percy. What? No, I've already picked up the coal, said a confused Thomas. No you haven't. Your trucks are empty, said Percy. That's strange. I saw Chomper fill them with coal. 
Where did it all go? wondered Thomas. So he reversed off back to the coal yard. That was a very quick delivery, said Chomper. I didn't deliver it. I lost it on the way, said Thomas. That's strange. Oh well, I'll give you some more coal, said Chomper. So he filled the trucks again. Be careful this time. We're running out of coal, warned Chomper. We can't afford to lose any more. Thomas understood and left. But again, it disappeared. He reached Percy. It's gone again, Thomas, he said. So a frustrated Thomas went back to the coal yard. Oh, not again, sulked Chomper. I won't lose it this time. If I push the truck, I will see exactly when it disappears, explained Thomas. So the truck was put in front of him and he pushed it away. In the tunnel, the coal disappeared again. Hmm, it disappeared in that tunnel, thought Thomas. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a coal-filled truck leave. It was very suspicious, so he followed it. It went into an area which trains weren't allowed to go in. This is very suspicious, he thought. So he went in and immediately saw the culprit. Diesel 10 Got him, thought Thomas. I've got you now, cried Thomas. Oh no! Why have you been stealing my coal? Thomas asked. Diesels don't need coal. So without it, I can show that Sodor can be run by diesels, said Diesel 10. Well, your plan hasn't worked, said Thomas. He called Sir Topham Hat. Diesel, you're in big trouble now, said Sir Topham Hat. You're going to have to deliver all of this coal as punishment. Oh no. So Chomper loaded up all of the trucks. Diesel reluctantly delivered them to the engine sheds. <laughs> ah! Oh, oh. A good dream, Thomas, said Gordon. No, said Thomas, it wasn't. Ah, Thomas, said Sir Topham Hat. Today, I'd like you to move all the cargo. But sir, that means using those troublesome trucks, said Thomas. Well, yes, of course it does. How else are you going to do it? Now off you go. Good luck, Thomas, shouted Percy. Don't let them boss you around, said James. Thomas left in a bad mood and immediately started bumping the trucks. He actually started to enjoy it and bumped them harder and harder.
trucks were not happy and had a meeting. They came up with a plan to get back at Thomas. Thomas then steamed around the corner and up the slope and right into a truck. He was now completely stuck. His wheels were going round, but he was going nowhere. The trucks lowered the trap and then started bumping the truck that Thomas was in. The truck didn't mind, but Thomas found it very uncomfortable. Then one big bump and Thomas and his truck toppled over. The trucks all laughed. Digging Rig's chomper was called to sort out the mess. He quickly got to work. Eventually, Thomas was back on the track, with some trucks behind him. Thanks, Chomper, he said, and carried on. Later on, back at Tibner's Sheds, the other engines found it all quite funny. Sir Topham Hat wasn't happy though, and told Thomas that tomorrow he would have to finish moving the cargo, and that he would have to be good to the trucks. If you treat them well, they will work hard for you, he said. Thomas didn't want to close his eyes that night, just in case he saw... said Thomas excitedly. Is there a clown on the Isle of Sodor? Maybe there's a carnival. I must tell Sir Topham Hat. <laughs> and Thomas steamed away to find Sir Topham Hat. Oh, hello, Thomas. What brings you here? I found a clown carriage. Is there a carnival here somewhere? Not that I know of, Thomas, but I'm sure we can quickly make one. So Thomas left the station to tell all of the other engines, who all started to find different items for the new carnival. Meanwhile, the Joker was trying out his plan. <laughs> My plan works. Soon. Isle of Sodor will be mine! Mm, that's odd. 
There are fireworks over the Joker's factory. I hope he's not up to anything. Okay, Thomas and Percy, I have two important jobs for you today. Thomas, I need you to pick up some guests for the carnival. And Percy, I need you to collect the clown. Let's go! Soon, James found the two trucks of fireworks which the Joker had placed there. Oh, these will be so good for the carnival! So James took them. Oh, good idea, James! Just be careful with them. Fireworks can be very dangerous if they catch on fire. Meanwhile, at the Bat Cave... Stop, Thomas! I need your help. But Batman, I need to collect guests for the carnival. Hmm. I'm sorry, Thomas, but I think it's a trap. I think the Joker is planning something evil. Oh no, now that you've mentioned it, I think he is too. I didn't find a clown carriage earlier. I found the Joker's carriage. We must go and save everyone. The Joker entered his clown carriage and let Percy pick him up and take him to the carnival. You fools! Now you are all doomed! <laughs> oh no, it's a trap! No! I've got you now, Joker. Thanks, Batman and Thomas. Once again, you have saved the Isle of Soap. Hey guys, Chris here. Thanks for watching my video. Hope you liked it. Please don't forget to subscribe to Toy Trains View if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in another video very soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye!